So my dad recently gave me his arrowhead collection, which consists of points that he collected when he was younger in southern Oregon. And there's a lot of really cool tools in here. Here's an example of a basalt knife. I haven't been able to flint that basalt yet because I haven't found a good source that has fine enough grains, but clearly it's a material that was used by Native Americans. There's a lot of projectile points in here too. Here's a point with a notched base, and here's one with a stem at the base. And what I like so much about this point is that it's clearly uh, been sitting on the surface for a long time. It's got that white mineralized crust, the Kalit J on it, and uh, it's really cool. So as I was going through all the projectile points in the box, I started breaking them up into different types and notice a consistent pattern that there was a similar style base on a lot of these points. They have barbed shoulders here and a stem that is notched. And almost all of these points in here have a broken tip, which usually is a sign that it was shot and either hit a bone or hit a piece of wood or rock and uh, broke off. And so these are clearly points that were used for either hunting or war. And uh, I'm going to reproduce this style of point. I'm probably going to base it more on this style. It's a larger point that was a triangle, has uh, notches on the corners there, and get that fluted stem. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, strike open an obsidian boulder here with a rock and get a flake. And then we'll use some antler tools to flint nap in the exact same style the Native Americans who made these points did. So. Hopefully when we're done with this video, we'll have a representation of this point only with the tip on it. And before we start striking flakes off of this piece of obsidian using this hammer stone, I just want to mention always wear safety glasses. Uh, you could easily go blind if you catch a piece of obsidian in your eye. So I'm going to just start striking this uh, obsidian uh, with this hammer stone to get some flakes. And that last flake of obsidian that came off is just perfect for making this arrowhead. Uh, it's nice and uh, thin and good size. The tools I'm going to be using are simply a uh, antler tine for pressure flaking and uh, antler base for striking flakes off. So now we're ready to start uh, shaping this piece and the first thing I'm going to do is just remove these super thin uh, edges that are not strong enough to support flakes. And I'll just do that by striking it with the antler billet. So we got those thin edges removed and are starting to take bigger pieces off. So what I'm going to want to do now is grind these edges with the stone and start uh, selectively thinning this piece by striking uh, areas that will run on along the ridge line. So I got this high spot here and I'm going to flip it over and strike it right there to remove a flake along here. Perfect. Now I'm ready to do the exact same thing just on this next ridge over. And the next one just keep working it down. It's already getting a lot thinner. We have a high spot right here, so we'll send some thinning flakes up into this part. Just keep working those ridges till uh, you got the piece thinned.
So we're starting to get some nice flakes running across this piece. I still got some thick edges here, which I'll continue to strike flakes and uh, get a nice thin biface. As you can see here, we got a pretty good biface going, and uh, I'm done with the percussion uh, flint napping, and uh, now I'm going to go to pressure flaking. And to do that, I'm just going to place this antler tine right here on the edge and push in and down and start removing flakes to refine the shape of this piece. So I got this by face nice and thin and then starting to get a good flaking pattern but it's over uh, twice as long as it needs to be to make uh, this style point. So I'm going to start shortening this piece by working it from the back here. So I took off quite a bit off of the bottom half of that biface we were working just to get it to the size we wanted for matching this original point. So now I just need to put in the barbs on the shoulders and a stem with a notch in it and to do that I'm just going to do some pressure flaking with the antler tine. So that's about as deep as I can get with this antler tine uh, on these notches. Clearly, uh, whoever flint napped this piece had a finer pressure flaker. So I might go a little deeper, but to do that, I'm going to need to switch to my uh, nail uh, pressure flaker. So here's the point that I just flint napped from Obsidian, and here are some of the original points from my dad's cigar box collection. I think these two match pretty close. This is probably what this point looked like before it was put on an arrow and shot and had the tip broken off. Um, I'm curious what people call this style of point. I've had several people tell me that Oregon has uh, some styles that have uh, barbed shoulders and notch stems, including Elko's, uh, Pinto Basins, Little Lakes and uh, Eastgate split stem. So let me know what you call this style of point and it's really fun reproducing Native American style points and seeing what they look like when they were uh, not broken. So I'll probably dig into the old cigar box and try to make several other points in the near future. <laughs>